Okay, so I started before I hit the record button and I've laid down two of these and this is going to be my third one. I'm using this spacer which is twice the width of the cardstock that I'm laying down. I'm using graphics medium weight but if you're using something else just glue two strips together and that's going to be your spacing tool. And I'm trying to make sure I have a nice straight line across the bottom before I lay it down. I'm holding it at an angle so I can adjust it. Okay. So the goal is once you lay down these panels that this spacer will stand on its own. That means that evenly across the whole chipboard piece there's pressure on it. If it doesn't want to stand that means one side or the other isn't really um, pressing on the spacer. Okay. So we're going to add one more. There's a total of six. I'm going to add one more before we add another piece of paper. And I apologize for not recording right from the beginning. You missed these two pieces. <clears throat> but it's the same process. So basically I have one inch around here and one inch here. And I've joined two eight and a half by elevens end to end. And then I'm going to add one more before we finish. So once we add all six pieces, we're going to have six sides and that's going to create a hexagon, which is going to be the shape of our project. Okay, so again I'm going to press my spacer as hard as I can to the to the panel I just laid down. I'm going to line it up on the bottom and I'm going to use my ruler uh, to make sure that I'm getting a straight line on the bottom. I have a pencil mark as a guide but I use the ruler before I press it into place. Okay, so your spacer should stand on its own, which means that you have equal pressure on both sides of the chipboard. Okay, I'm gonna add my third piece of cardstock, and I'm gonna add two more panels. That's what we're doing. And some of it's gonna be off screen. I can't help you with that. My camera's just too uh, close to the project which most of the time is a good thing. Okay. Whoa, I almost pushed my drink off the table. I'm not used to tearing it away from me. Okay, I need to... Okay. Here it is. Okay. So you don't have to be perfect. Make it as straight as you can. All this is going to get wrapped around the chipboard that we're laying down and all of it will be covered, it won't be exposed, so right angles really aren't that significant. Just make it as close as you can. Okay, now we're ready to lay down the last two, and you can see that they're gonna fit. So it's three pieces of eight and a half by 11 end to end. And just as a reminder, each one of these panels is four and a quarter by six and a quarter. And I'm sure you recognize those measurements as being sort of the golden measurements of uh, your typical photograph, which is four by six, which is why I chose that dimension. Okay, here is my spacer. Here's my ruler. The 
this is our last one. So that is all six panels. I'm going to trim off the excess here. Oops, sorry, I hit the camera. I'm left handed, so I had to flip things over. We're going to trim that off. Oops, there we go. Okay, so just like on a regular album, we're going to fold all the sides over and miter the corners, and we're gonna treat it pretty much like the cover of a book. And I missed something here. Sorry if you can hear that in the background, it's my husband doing something in the garage. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is my, uh, mark my miters. And I like to use my tape tar tool, which is 1 8 inch thick, which is what we're going to need. And that makes it pretty easy. You don't want to over trim your sides or you will um, leave your corner revealed. Okay. Okay, we're going to add tape all the way around uh, for each one of the panels on the edge, and then we're also going to put tape all the way around the edge of the cardstock. So this is roughly one inch. Um, it's just the width of my ruler. I'm going to use 3 8 inch tape and I'm going to place it on the bottom just like I described and then for the cardstock I'm going to place it on the outer edge and then when you fold it over basically you'll have the tape here and the tape on this outside edge which will overlap which basically gives you two lines of tape securing everything in place. Okay. So I'm going to start by adding my tape to the bottom of each one of these panels. And I like to rip it at the seam, otherwise every time you open and close it you're going to hear this crackling sound where it's um, grabbing and releasing from the chipboard, and I don't like that. <laughs> Turning everything over, I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Okay, now I'm going to run tape on both ends. Okay, 
Now we're going to go on the outside edge of the cardstock. I think this is the widest project I've done um, and it takes up a lot, a lot of space. So I'm going to be going back and forth um, in the frame and I apologize for that, but I just I can't get far enough away from the project to get it all in frame and still have it in focus. There you go. Okay, now I'm going to burnish everything and then we're going to start rolling it over and pressing it into place. Okay, so I've got all the tape on. I have mitered my four corners and I've got uh, I've burnished everything and I'm um, also scored uh, on the top and the bottom so that the tape should be easy to remove and the paper should be easy to fold over. So I'm going to start at the bottom. I like to do the top and bottom first and then um, work on the uh, outside edges last. It's very long, so it's hard to see, but that's one edge, that's the other, and I'm going to start by folding it over, and I'm going to start in the middle and work my way out. So the reason I do that is if there's any issue with the paper, I want it to go to the outside edges and not be bundled in the middle. Okay. I'm going to work the paper for a second, and then I'm going to start in the middle and push out. And as I push down, I'm also pushing up and down. Okay, so the paper should be grabbing uh, on the chipboard as well as on the edge of the cardstock. Okay, now I'm going to burnish this all in place. I'm going to flip it over. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. So as it turns out, these are eight and a half by 11 end to end, and it turns out that I have a seam here and a seam here, which is very hard to see on camera. But if it turned out that my seam was in the middle of one of these um, breaks in the chipboard, I would have adjusted it one way or the other. So this works out perfect. You don't want to join or a joint in the middle of any of those seams or spaces. So that worked out just beautifully, but if you use 12 by 12, it might not work out exactly the same. All right, so I set my pick tool down and now I don't see it. There it is, I put it up. <laughs> Okay, same as before, I'm going to work it over and I'm going to push up and out.
brush the other side. And then the last thing we're going to do is repeat this process for the ends. Okay. Now I've done this um, on all my album tutorials, but I'm going to go through it again just in case you're new to the channel and you haven't seen an album build. But what I'm going to do is the same uh, for an album. We are going to go to the ends. I'm going to show you how to fold it over and trim it so you get a beautiful miter. Okay. So just a second. So I just um, went ahead and scored through each one of those channels. Okay. I'm going to bring it close to the camera. So you can see there's some overlap here and here. So you can see how that's not a beautiful miter. What we're going to do is fold it over, score it before we remove any of the tape. Press it down so that we know where it's going to lay once we're ready to remove the tape. Okay, now we're going to take our scissors and you can see there's a little lip here and a bigger one here. We're going to rest the scissor on the corner and trim. Look at that, it's perfect. We're going to do the same thing on the other side, which has got um, a bigger lip, but you always want to rest on the corner and cut away from the corner. Otherwise, you run the risk, and there it is, beautiful miter, you run the risk of over trimming and exposing the chipboard. Okay. Now I'm going to bring this all up so you can see it. Once I put the tape, once I press it into the tape. But like I said, always rest on the corner and trim away from the corner, never toward the corner. All right, here we go. Press this all into place. Okay. So you can see it's it's a beautifully, I'm going to try to tilt it so the light can catch it, mitered corner here and here, and there's no chipboard exposed, okay? So we're going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to press it in place, and this helps us know exactly what we're trimming. And again, we're going to press the scissors. I'll try to show it to you on an angle, which is not easy. <laughs> we're going to press the scissor to the corner. We're not going to go straight in like this. We want to go in like on an angle. There we go. And there's our beautiful miter. Okay, we're going to do the same thing on the other side. One side's always easier than the other, unless you can cut with both hands. I'm going to test it real quick before I take the tape off. Looks like I can cut a little more here. There we go. And I'll press it all in place. We'll have two beautifully mitered corners. So there it is. There is the base of our hexagon, which is a six-sided shape. There you go. So that's what it's going to look like. So that's the base of what we're working on. So I'm going to stop here, work things into place. And the next time we sit down together, we're going to start building the base and the lid for this project. So this is just the sides, which is the structure. We're going to have a base and then we're going to have a lid. And the lid, let me show you what it looks like. The lid is going to look without the blue tape like this. So in the end, um, we're going to have a hexagon box and a lid. 
and basically our project is going to look like a tent, uh, which is right in line with the theme of Come One, Come All. Okay, so this is what we're going to work on next, and this is just uh, cardstock. It's not chipboard yet, so there you go. That's what it's going to look like, and of course, it's going to hold its shape based on the base we built. Okay. These two ends should not be glued together. They need to remain open, okay? So this should be one long um, segmented piece of the project should remain open. In the end, it's gonna look like this, but we're not going to seal it because it's not really gonna be a box. It's gonna open up, okay? So leave these two ends open. So that's it. So again, that's six pieces of four and a quarter by six and a quarter wrapped with cardstock. You're gonna have an eighth of an inch gap between each one of the panels. Wrap it, set it aside, and then start working on the lid.